have been thinking about this actually for months before I started it. And I, I just couldn't get it together. So I decided to just start throwing things on the canvas, which I did. And I was like, I'll just get some things on there, get my thoughts sorted out. And um, so I'm ending up, you know, I just kind of have this cartoon of a starting place. Last night, I was thinking about my deconversion. I stopped going to church um, as soon as I could. I went to a Church of Christ college for two years. And during that time, I realized this is not making my life better. So um, as soon as I quit school, after my first bout with college, I, um, I was done with church as well. There was quite a bit that went into that, um, including the church disfellowshipped me, which is their way of saying excommunicated. And their reason for disfellowshipping me was I wasn't going to church. They kicked me out of church because I wasn't going to church. I pointed this out to them and said, you know, the only people that are going to be bothered by this are well, basically my mom, because the way the Church of Christ works is if you get disfellowshipped, you're not allowed to um, share meals or be under the same roof with your um, family and friends who are Christians. And I said, well, you know, I know my dad's not going to stop seeing me, but my mom probably will. So you're going to hurt my mom. It's not going to hurt me because I'm not going there anyway. I'm not going back. Um, so anyway, that was a little adventure. But as time went on, I started, you know, in, in my very early 20s, late teens, early 20s, I'm on my own, and I kind of wanted a community of some sort, and I thought, well, maybe it, it was just the Church of Christ that was the problem, so I attended several other churches, a Methodist church, a Baptist church, and they, they all said the same kinds of stuff. They just kind of dressed it up a little bit differently. It was all the same thing, though, and... Um, so I gave up this one last try. I went to a church that I knew nothing, nothing about. It was the Unitarian Church on Jefferson in New Orleans, where I lived. I had a zoo membership, and I kind of made the zoo into my personal church. And on the way to and from the zoo, I would see this Unitarian Church. Um, it was this really cool building on Jefferson in New Orleans, um, and... So I decided, okay, I'm going to give that church a try and, you know, just see what happens. So I go in there. I, it was a summer day. I put on what I thought you wore to church. I put on a dress and I um, put on my makeup and went to church. And it was very, very casual. And um, everybody's just kind of sitting around. There were people in shorts. And they said, the person that got up to speak, his name was Rob Roy. Can you believe it? But he talked about being both a um, a Jesuit priest and a monk, a Zen monk. So he had really gone the spectrum, and he was talking about inclusion as opposed to exclusion. He was like, "I don't, you know, I, I, my belief is that um, a true religion doesn't exclude anybody." Anyway, it was like I was really enthralled um, after he spoke people were given the opportunity to stand up and, and comment. And I'm like, well, that's, that's pretty cool. Turns out this was during this time when um, they invited people to stand up, an older woman stood up and this had been a very eye opening presentation to me. I had never heard of a religious person that thought that um, everybody should be included. It was crazy wild and wonderful to me. I was really um, smitten with this approach and this woman stood up. And she looked like she could have been one of my grandma's friends. She had on a um, a little floral dress. Her hair was white, and it was kind of a blue, bluish white, like the ladies used to wash, rinse their hair in bluing. And it was braided. It was long, and it was braided and wrapped around her head. And I'm thinking, oh shit, here we go. She's this. She's having going to have a problem because I'm thinking she's like the other ladies that look like that in my life. And she stands up and she says, you know, I really appreciate what you had to say. I'm 80 years old and I've been an atheist all my life. Well, I was shocked. I was like, she's 80 years old. 
she's been an atheist all her life? And I'm like, whoa, you can think what you want, you can do what you want, and you can be here. So I knew from that moment that the Unitarian Church was a safe place. And it was, uh, it was really eye-opening. But I decided that I wanted, to, I wanted to bring that woman into this painting. And I wanted her to kind of be the central focus. I'm not comfortable with these people on the front row, so they're probably going to entirely change except the little girl. I really love her. Um, but these two people draw too much attention, and it probably... Maybe I need to put the lady up here on the front row. Maybe that's what I'll do. Just bring her forward. Anyway, those are things that I'm thinking about as I do this, this painting about women's voices in religion. And I hope that you'll stick around and let me know what you're thinking. And I did decide to go ahead and put the lady, the 80-year-old atheist lady, on the front row. She's going to be holding a cane. And I may write on the bottom what it says here, stand up, speak out. I've added a woman who's nursing a baby. I mean, these are the things that women do. And um, that's a beautiful, wonderful thing that humans and other mammals can do to nurse a baby. And this woman, there have always been strong women, but I never grew up seeing them stand up and say, I will have a voice. I will use my voice in this place that's important to me. I heard these strong women saying, I need to sit down and shut up and let the men make all the decisions. Even when I could see perfectly well that some of the men who were speaking were about as smart as a thumbtack. They were not as smart as some of the women that were told they have to shut up and sit down and let the men do all the talking. And that's not okay. And um, so I'm trying to do this painting about a different way I might have grown up had the world been a lot differently, different than it was, but it wasn't. It was what it is. So I'm depicting the people of my childhood in the place of my childhood, but with a different approach, with strong women speaking out.